So the Chancellor, Rishi Sunak, facing calls to come clean on his family's financial affairs after it emerged that his wife benefits from a tax saving scheme. The millionaire Akshata Murthy has non-dom, non-domicile, non-domicile status, non-dom, meaning that she does not have to pay UK tax on any income that she earns abroad. That's entirely legal, of course, but is it right? That's a moral question. And indeed it's a political question too. Is it right that the Chancellor's household uh, is benefiting from some tax saving schemes here when he's setting the rules for all the rest of us. We'll be talking about that in a moment. But this, of course, is not the first time the Chancellor has been asked about his wife's uh, business dealings. His wife, incidentally, is fabulously wealthy in her own right. This exchange is from a live interview on Sky just last week. It's been reported uh, that, that you've got family links to, to Russia, that your wife apparently has a stake in the Indian IT consultancy firm Infosys. Um, they operate in Moscow, they have an office there, they have a delivery office there, they've got a connection to the Alpha Bank in Moscow. Are you giving advice to others that you're, you're not following in your own home? That's not, as a, I, I'm an elected politician and I'm here to talk to you about what I'm responsible for. Uh, my wife is not. So that was uh, a very, you know, I don't know how you describe that. Was that shirty? He was closing down the question, let's put it that way, the Chancellor last week. Then speaking to the BBC's Laura Kunzberg about his wife also last week, the Chancellor compared himself, would you believe it, to, to the Hollywood actor Will Smith. Yeah, someone said, you know, Joe Root, Will Smith and me, not the best of weekends uh, for any of us. But I think on reflection, both both Will Smith and me having our wives attacked, but at least I didn't get up and, uh, and slap anybody, which is good. All right, well, we are. I've never done this before, but we're going to have a debate about this, uh, about this issue, about the Chancellor, the Chancellor's wife, and about the non dom st uh, status in tax law. And whether you feel aggrieved, incidentally, that the person who's setting all the rules, you know, the Chancellor of the Exchequer, uh, his own family household is benefiting from a tax saving scheme here. It's entirely legal, but do you think that's right uh, that that should be going on? We're going to have this debate for the first time. <laughs> with a husband and wife, and they are both experts in this area. Accountant and former tax inspector Felicity Houston and her husband, Adrian Houston. Welcome to both of you. Hi, Will. Must be fun in your house. Were you arguing about this this morning? Oh, uh, yes, Felicity? over breakfast, of course we were. Yeah, where do you come out on this, Felicity? <laughs> uh, um, I think that just because it's legal doesn't mean it's right. I've, I've always felt that about a lot of things and there's no doubt she may, well, we could argue about whether she's entitled to even to the status and that's probably what Adrian and I were arguing about, neither of us knowing very much about her details, of course. Um, but I just think that when you're married to the man who is, you know, setting the rules, as somebody said earlier, and is collecting the money and everything to be doing this is just, it's just wrong. You know, she could afford to pay the tax in the UK. It won't make much difference to her overall, and it would be much better. What does non-DOM status mean? I should have asked that first, Felicity, oh, but what dear. does it actually right. well, mean? Well, it basically means that um, you have, in tax tax circumstances, it means that the income that you earn or, or, or gain abroad, and that stays abroad, is not taxed by the UK authorities. If you're domiciled in the UK, your worldwide income, and that's a simplistic way of putting it, would be taxed by the UK. What domicile also means is it's actually a common law term, and it's really about where your roots are. When I did my tax exams back in the mists of time, my tutor told me that domicile was where your heart is which I always thought was quite a good way of describing it. You know, very where poetic you for accountants. Well, indeed, yes. Well, we're not as dull as people, some people think, and very poetic for a tax inspector. <laughs> but that was, that was what she always said as the way of judging it. Now, things have moved quite a lot since then, but... I mean, back in the 80s and early 90s, to be non-domiciled was really quite difficult. Right. Yeah. It isn't anymore. Adrian, do you think it's strange that we're talking about the Chancellor's wife here? Well, I don't think it's that strange in that um, we do always look at public figures and, and there's, a, there's often a rather uh, unfortunate interest in the activities of their children and their families. But I don't think we should be talking about it in any detail because, uh, you know, uh, way back, I think, 1996, married women became independent of their husbands. They were entitled. Their husbands didn't declare the wife's income. They were fully independent people, taxed independently. And I don't think that her tax status um, 
should be challenged simply because she happens to be married to someone who is now the Chancellor. But when you're fabulously wealthy, Adrian, and you have residential properties in various places, and we know that uh, this couple have property all over the world, including California and a number in the UK. I mean, where you choose to register yourself and to be domiciled is is a question for you, isn't it? You've got to decide that with your with your advisors. Can there be any doubt in anyone's mind that the Chancellor's wife is domiciled in the UK? Oh, absolutely, there can be doubt because um, she acquires her domicile when she's born and it's typically the domicile of the father. And then uh, when she becomes 16, she can has the potential to change her domicile by, by, by choice, i.e. because she's moved to a different country, for example, the UK, she could say she wants to be domiciled in the UK. Um, that would mean um, a change, but she may never have done that. So her domicile would remain in India. The key thing here is if she... There's, even there's if she's living domicile. most of the yes, time in the UK? She lives, if she All lives of the time in the UK. weeks a year in London, she could still be... So she can be living in London. in London the entire year and she's paying tax in India? Absolutely. And lots of people uh, that will apply to. But the important thing here is... Domicile is one thing. You can have this domicile. She could be living full time in India. Maybe not visit India for 10 years. She could be domiciled in India, living in London. But if she wants the special tax treatment, she does have to pay quite a large fee for that. It's either £30,000 a year or £60,000 a year. So yeah. this is not a free option. It is a tax planning measure. That well, is we know that she's worth nearly a billion dollars. pounds, right? Hmm. So uh, 30 or 60 grand a year for this option exactly. is not I mean, exactly and, a big and just fee for, the for sheer her. simplicity of it, uh, of not having to declare to HMRC all of, their, all of her uh, income and assets in India, um, that may be quite attractive and it may be a, may be a small price to pay. Sure. But it's completely legitimate. It's and legitimate it legally. It's entirely legitimate legally, yeah. though there is a debate about whether this non-DOM law, which has been on the books for centuries, hasn't it, whether this should actually go. And I think Gordon Brown regrets that he didn't remove it, uh, repeal it when he was Prime Minister. He has said as much. Can we talk about the politics of this as well, Felicity? Yes. It's not not a good look, is it? It's not a good look for the Chancellor. Point out, in my opinion, she probably isn't domiciled in India because one of the main things from the revenue is that you're normally recorded as domiciled in the country where you have your permanent home and her permanent home is the United Kingdom, surely, um, given that she's settled here and she's married to the Chancellor of the uh, UK, a man who would like to be Prime Minister. And, you know, would we still have this ridiculous suggestion she wasn't domiciled in the UK if she was married to the Prime Minister? I mean, it's just crackers. But politically, it's it's disastrous for him. You know, I mean, Sunak has come across as this rather nice chap. Yeah. Um, and, and, and does a great PR thing. And I mean, I, I thought that initially, you know, if we were going to have this lockdown craziness, then probably what he did actually saved the country from absolute destitution. But the outworkings of it was always going to be the massive problem. And I mean, on the, the week the national insurance increase comes in, um, it's now public that, you know, his wife has her affairs organised like this. And you say it is a net benefit to the entire family. So it's excruciatingly embarrassing for him. Do you, wait, how, how come this is only coming out now, yes, Felicity? Yes, quite. Well, I see Grazia magazine had it before the, the um, broad yeah. sheets, which is interesting. But I'm presuming... Do you think there, just... were, there were some people in Downing Street, maybe on the Boris side, who thought that... Um... Oh, Old Rishi was getting a bit too big for I, well, his... Well, I think I'd have thought after the past couple of weeks, in fact, slightly longer on the... Uh, because of the National Insurance and so on, Rishi's um, star was no longer in the ascendancy, you know, and, I mean, the inflation and all that sort of stuff. So maybe they decided to leak it. But, I mean, you know, it's the sort of thing that I would have thought the financial journalists might have pondered a bit about how they've actually got it out of somebody. I don't know how she's confirmed her status because, I mean, that's nobody's business but hers in that way. Right. You know, it's not something the revenue would ever share with. Of course. Adrian. Yeah, well, absolutely. I think Felicity's got to hit the nail on the head. It is nobody's business but hers what her tax status is. She is an independent woman, happens to be married to the Chancellor, and, and she has a domicile in India, which therefore entitles her, if she wishes to pay the large fee... Is it really uh, nobody's issue? Is it fees? really nobody else's issue? I mean, Felicity made the other point there, which is it would be our issue, wouldn't it, if Rishi Sunak was the Prime Minister and his wife was non-dom? 
I don't, I don't, I don't see it. No, really? I, 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 there's no, there's no corruption here. No I, one suggests there's corruption. We're, in, we're, we're no, we've moved we from the legal about, point into the political point and perceptions part of that. The public yeah, would, about, would be concerned about that, wouldn't they? Well, some might. I can't imagine many would really care because at the end of the day, we worry about politicians taking bribes to do bad things. But a politician's wife organising her affairs to yeah, either keep them simpler or to pay less tax is mm. nothing to do with that politician. But you see, um, Adrian, they, they said that all those claims under expenses, remember, were, were perfectly legal. They were just all within the rules, but people did not oh. like their politicians paying for a duck house or their moat to be cleaned right. or many another thing. You know, actually, we, we, we expect better of them and, and it rolls out to their family as well. And there's I mean, more it's to price politics they pay for than it. just what is strictly legal. Absolutely, but we're not talking about misuse of public funds here. We're talking. About you keep a bringing us back to something we're not talking about, Adrian. No <laughs> one's suggesting misuse of public funds. I said introducing the item; it's entirely legal. The question is whether it's right and whether politically it makes sense. Well, I could well believe that uh, certain politicians might decide that they would try to persuade their spouses to order their affairs differently, just for the optics of it. But I, I do think the country. And the world goes very bad places by feeling the need to change things because the Twitter mob has decided it's not acceptable. I'm not counting my wife and the Twitter mob there <laughs> mm-hmm. because I do have to have lunch with her. <laughs> but uh, but the, at the end of the day, she shouldn't have to change her affairs just because it's more politically expedient and there's no legal obligation to do it. And I don't think Rishi has un- done anything wrong. Do you think it's just a coincidence then? Adrian, that, that this story is breaking just in the week when the national insurance increase comes into it's effect. Hardly, it's hardly a coincidence. I mean, he, he, the, the, the Conservative Party polls its members and Rishi has always been right up there at the top, one of the most popular members of Cabinet, delighted how he's dealing with COVID, blah, 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 blah. And this week's poll, he has plunged to the bottom of the list. Uh, actual Conservative members poll have, have really not liked what he's done to national insurance, have not felt he's done enough on fuel duties, etc. And so he's much less popular. And I'm sure that's why this has come out. But as Felicity said, how on earth did the story come out in the first place? Who broke the news that she has this special tax status? Because between, it should be between her and her accountants. And I'm talking to two people who at least have been members of the Conservative Party or may still be members. Felicity, are you still a member or did you leave? take the fifth on that. Um, I'm still a member to try and do my best to stop Michael Gove being our next Prime Minister. That's why I've remained a member of the party. What about you, Adrian? <laughs> I, I remain a member with uh, slightly fewer issues than Felicity. <laughs> slightly fewer. So it just shows there's a bit of diversity in that party. And when it comes to the, the Northern Ireland Conservative Party, did you see some of the, the press reports yesterday, interviews in, in the papers, Felicity, yesterday? using the word potentially extinct, oh, well, the we, extinction uh, of the Northern Ireland Tories. <laughs> the rumours of our death have been greatly exaggerated for the past 30 years. I should say that um, Adrian and I met when we were both not only tax inspectors but members of the Conservative Party and it's always been a very small and select group here in Northern Ireland. I mean, I gave up personally any belief that we would have electoral success a long time ago. And that's a whole different, I mean, right. that's a whole show on its own. Um, You're there for the canapes. Uh, well, really. yeah, yes, and, and, and to talk about things with like-minded people. Sure. That's can what it's can you deal with this quickly, if you can, this question from Mary in Stonyford. Does this mean what we're talking about, about non-DOM status? Does this mean that all these sort of wealthy oligarch-type Russians living in, in, in Britain are classed as non-DOMs? I would think you find a lot of them will be people like Abramovich, the people who really live here, you know, and all these other Russians whose names I couldn't begin to pronounce. I would expect them to be non-domiciled. This all started under Blair. I mean, you mentioned earlier that Gordon Brown wished he'd change things, but Blair wouldn't let him. He decided it was a good idea to bring this foreign money to the UK, and it was decided mm. then, and that's when it really started. And it's, it's such a change from 30-odd years ago when it was a very difficult thing to get. And with that decision by Tony Blair, therein lies in many ways the, the development of the London the laundry system, uh, which is much in the news these days. Yes, and I mean, there's talk today about, you know, the British, uh, the, the city of London and the amount of Russian money going through it and the EU are sort of looking at that too. So Yes, mm, interesting it's interesting times indeed too. because often the, the Conservatives get the blame for a lot of this and there's blame to be going around, as you can hear from these two Conservative Party members also pointing out that Tony Blair 
was part of this system too. Thank you both very much. Really appreciate it. Felicity Houston and Adrian Houston. Enjoy your lunch. Try not to debate that too much um, over... I bet they're having salmon, don't you think? They're bound to be having salmon. Uh, let's get the news now. We'll be talking about 